Burr. Holy crap, it's cold though. Today, we're gonna be doing a quick service on the Duramax before winter. And also, um, there's something that broke on it. So, what I have here is a, a new transfer case housing and a pump rub kit fix. I was looking underneath, I'm like, what in the world? There was oil across my whole undercarriage. Um, so I went ahead and had a look, and I'll show you guys here now. So I followed it up and up, and sure enough, it's coming from my transfer case. When I looked a little closer, it's not coming from the case halves. I thought maybe it was there. And I cleaned it all off, and it's actually coming from right in this corner. There is a tiny pinhole that I found. I did some digging around online and found out that there is a pump rub issue with this truck. But in the meantime, we're gonna get the oil change done, um, jack up the front end, check that all out, then we're gonna get busy on this transfer case repair, and I'll walk you through a little more in depth on what's going on there. All right, I just got it right in here. Went for a little drive, got the oil warm. Now we'll do this, do this oil change. Alright, and I also changed my air filter. It was uh, pretty, pretty dirty, so. But we're gonna start getting after this transfer case. Um, basically, yeah, uh, this is my first time doing it, so I'm gonna record as I go and let you know what I find. But we're gonna start with the rear drive shaft and get that out of the way. So. Rear drive shaft is 11 mil, I believe. Slide it out of the yoke. Like so. Now we're gonna move on to our front drive shaft. And pop this off. There we go. Sometimes you gotta use a screwdriver to pop that boot off. Oh, there we go. All right, now we're gonna get the oil draining. So, this guy here, that's a 18 mil. I have changed my transfer case oil not too long ago, so. Making a big mess. Oil is drained out of the transfer case. I'm just gonna throw the plug back in. Now we're gonna get our electrical out of the way. We're gonna go ahead and get this uh, speed sensor out. You have a cable here, and this just sits in, and this pops out. Then your electrical. Another thing too, you can use a flat blade and just undo these little clips and it pulls out of the harness nice. And then there'll be a big plug here that you have to undo. That one has a locking tab on it. This white section here, you just pull it back and then you're able to depress that little black tab and pull the plug apart. The next step that we're going to do is loosen off this cross member and support the transmission. I just put a block of wood across, take some of the, distribute the load a little better. And you don't have to pick it right up, you just want to take some of the weight. You can watch it pick up a bit. I'll start with that, I'll see how it sits when I get this cross member undone. You're gonna have two 16 millimeter bolts. And then, these guys, one, two, three, and four. So you're gonna need a wrench to hang on to that. That's a little better. There we go. Now it's loose. 
So yeah, you just want to jack up enough to take the weight. There we go. So to get at this one nut, um, the transfer case has studs on it that run toward the transmission and you have to undo six nuts all the way around. To get at the one, you have to pull off this little bracket. This is gonna be two 14 mil bolts. They are gonna be 15 mil. So let's go around and I'm gonna use a wrench to crack them free, a ratchet wrench to pull them off. Now you can do this with just a wrench, but a ratchet wrench obviously speeds things up. All right, this is the last nut of the six all the way around. Go ahead and pull that off. And there's this bracket here that has to go back on afterwards. It's just two bolts. This just holds the wiring, which is all here. So this can come out of the way. And now you guys can watch me get this thing out. Oh, and one more thing is there is a breather hose here. But be ready, this thing's gonna have some weight to it. So. Let that drain out a bit. I'm gonna let it down. Carefully. Not breaking anything. We'll let it sit down here. Some of that oil drain. Okay. In here is our transfer case. Alright, it's not a bad idea also. Especially if you're doing this outside. In my case, it's supposed to snow and I might not get this done today, so it's not a bad idea to keep this covered up. We're taking a quick break from this job here. I gotta go get something to eat. It is too cold out to be doing this too. It's three degrees Celsius. Even for where I'm living, this time of year, this is chilly. Too chilly. It's about engaging them. Okay, no, is there anyone worried? No, about teams. Kim Horton. Drop. All right, now that I got some food in me, I can go ahead and get going on this guy. So here we have our transfer case. So I'll show you on my phone. It's right here. So what happened is it finally wore through. Oil was running out and I was driving down the highway. The wind was blowing the oil back underneath my truck on everything else, making a big mess. Um, if you don't fix this, what will happen is eventually you will lose all your transfer case oil if you don't catch it and basically run your bearings dry and then you're stuck doing all your bearings and your transfer case as well. Before we get going on this, uh, I just want to show you the kit I got for the fix. So this is through Merchant Auto. It came in very quick. It took about a week to come in. And this is good from 2001 through to 2007, LB7, LLY, LBZ. But here we have, this one includes everything. So they give you transfer case fluid. Here we have a new pump. They even give us snap ring pliers and I'll show you why we will need those in this minute. And here we have, what is this? This is the seal driver. So they even give you tooling, which is huge. And here we have, uh, looks like a new drain plug, new seal, and, an o and a couple O-rings. And lastly, we have our transfer case itself, our half. So this is the top half right here. First things first, we're gonna go in here and get this plug out of here. You just use a flat blade. And now in here, you will see there is a snap ring. So what we got to do is get in and get this snap ring loosened off. Now the next step is to undo this nice ring of bolts they have for us. And on this side, you're going to have two brackets. You're going to have one here 
and one here for your wiring. So you're just gonna wanna pay attention to which bolt these went on. And I can now pry. As you can see, the case splits apart. I think on this side. All right, now it's coming. And it looks like there's our spring that would have broke off in our pump. And here's the other half of it in the case. There we go. So I'm going to slide that right off. Snap ring was first. Now our bearing is next in line. This gear here, or sorry, your sense, uh, your tone ring. This is for your speed sensor. Now your pump has this hose here, so just carefully pull it back and pop that out of place. So pull your pump off. There's the drive gear <clears throat> that goes up. It looks pretty good. I'm sure the pump, well, the pump is fine. It pumps fine. Just the problem is, and I will show you the difference. See, GM has a cast aluminum plate, and these ears are super thin. On Merchant Auto's fix kit, these ears are bigger, and this is also a billet aluminum plate. So this is machined down. Oh, it's kind of cool. They put their name on there. Um, but these go the full width of the case where it sits into the case. So before I go and throw this new pump on, is I'm just gonna dump a little bit of oil down it. A little bit back and forth. Now we're gonna throw the pump back on. You wanna make sure these keys are up and the gear is up. Your splines, your oil tube is in there nice. Now the next step is to throw your sensor ring down. If you forgot which way you pulled it out, there's a step on the bottom in this tone, or sorry, yes, this tone ring to go down. Um, you don't want the step up. Go ahead and drop your tone ring back on. If you don't put oil on, then it just runs dry for a bit once again, and it's not the greatest thing for it. And this guy is gonna go on with the snap ring flange up. There's a sweet spot, and then it should just drop on there. And it is a little tight, like I said, but what we're gonna do, you're gonna put this in, and you're gonna want it to line up with this hole here, just like that, snapped in place and spread it apart as we need in there. I just want to show you one thing to keep an eye out for. Right in this uh, oil pickup spot, you can see there's a bit of material in here. In my case, there's a bit of silicone that had gotten down in the pump. So yeah, your magnet, um, once you get your pump all clean and your tube clean, uh, you just want to make sure that your magnet goes back where it came from. It might pull up with uh, the top half of the case when you remove it, like mine did. It just stuck to the case and came up with it. So it just drops in here and you go back together. All right, one last thing you wanna do before you're gonna throw this case on is get your seal installed. Um, you can do it while it's on the case, but instead of trying to rock around the whole case, I'm gonna do it now. Um, set it on a nice flat bench. Nice Merchant Auto seal driver. Pop it on and I'm gonna tap this into place. Okay, so when you're putting your seal on, you wanna make sure it's all the way down, all the way around. Now you're ready to put the cases back together. In my case, they included some uh, RTV. Uh, this is uh, RTV, just high strength, just enough. Um, you don't have to bother going around the bolt holes because that's the, they're not through holes, they don't go into the case. Yeah, now we're gonna go ahead and throw the cover on. Now we're gonna torque it up to 35 foot-pounds. Same thing, I'm gonna start in the middle, either side, work my way out this way, work my way out that way. All right, and for this stud, you wanna go up to 40. Now it's not a bad idea to start in the middle and do one more lap around the whole case, make sure everything held. All right, 
with your speed sensor still out, you're going to want to go in with a screwdriver underneath that tone wheel. That way you can pick up the shaft. So that's going to allow you to come in here with your snap ring pliers and put that snap ring on as you're prying this up and down. Okay, so once you have your snap ring fully seated in place, um, you can go ahead and throw your plug back in if you're using your old one, or in my case, I have a new one. All right, now for your speed sensor, you're gonna to wanna to put your new O-ring on. All right, we're gonna put our new drain plug in, and that's gonna be tightened to 15 foot-pounds. So last thing we gotta do before we throw this thing in is get our new gasket in place and ready to go. So to get the old one off, um, you can try using a scraper. The only problem is if it's really stuck like mine is, you start um, gouging into the aluminum if you're pushing too hard. So what I find works really well and it actually loosens it up nice is you just take a hammer, a ball peen preferably. Um, if not, you can use the corner too. And you just basically, all you do is lightly tap all the way around on the gasket. So now you'll find it's going to want to lift off a lot easier wherever you tapped on. Alright, if you're having troubles getting the gasket off around the bolt holes, what I found works good is just taking a punch and same idea, just you just want to tap the gasket all the way around, not too hard. Just hit it and it'll start breaking free. Once you have your gasket cleaned off, give it a good wipe. And throw your new one in place. Right, and down below on your transmission adapter, you just want to make sure that it's nice and clean. There's no oil left on it. You see I got a bit of gasket I got to get off here. Um, once I clean that off, um, we'll be just working backwards and getting everything back together. So I got the transfer case in place here. <clears throat> we got our ring of bolts on, minus these two. I'll put these on with the bracket for the electrical. And we'll get all our plugs plugged back in. All right, now we're gonna get our cross member bolts back in. And we can go ahead and get our cross member up in place. So once your cross member's back in place, you can go ahead and slide your drive shafts back in the slip yokes. I just slipped the front one back in and I put a zip tie on where the steel clamp used to be. All right, now for your drive shaft bolts. Those are going to be 19 foot-pounds on those four guys and that's going to be the same for the front drive shaft to the diff as well. Alright, once you have your drive shafts hooked up, got all your electrical plugged in and your breather hose is plugged up, I'm um, sorry, plugged in, now we can go ahead and put oil in. I'm going to use this stuff the Merchant Auto sent me. I'm not certain what it is. I'm pretty sure the transfer case on these trucks take Dextron 3 or 4. Um, you can find that online. And I'm going to be filling up the Mighty Vac. This thing's pretty handy for stuff like this. Tight spots you just put on the end and you can push the oil through. Um, but I'm sure you can make something work with a funnel and squeezing it in there. Okay, we got oil in it. Got the fill plug in, now we're gonna let her warm up here and then go for a cruise. All right, test drive turned out good. No leaks, fluids look good still, so I'm happy. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. That's all I got. Um, I also greased front end, checked all my other levels, so and I tested out my block heater and my stick on oil pan and transmission heater. So I'm good to go for winter, minus the winter front, but it's not that cold yet. Anyways, hopefully you guys found something useful in this video and we will see you in the next one.